Hello everybody, welcome to the Impressive channel. There's a few hot topics that I wanna discuss in this video. First, starting with Megan the Stallion. Now, Megan has been at home minding her business and healing from her injury, but people can't seem to get her name out their mouth. Now, for those who don't know the backstory, Megan was allegedly shot in the foot by a rapper named Tory Lanez, and I say allegedly because there hasn't been much information shared about the incident, but there has been some speculation that Megan and Tori got into a lover's quarrel because they were dating on the low. In fact, Unwind with Tasha K actually revealed this exclusive, and I am saying allegedly because we don't know, but there has been some speculation about what happened, and some people were saying that an argument took place between Megan and Tori at Kylie Jenner's pool party, and it led to Megan being shot in the foot, allegedly. So the, what I'm hearing, my version that I've heard from various people that have basically been trusted filtered sources? through AD, yes, very okay. trusted sources, is that Megan and Tori have been fucking. They've been chilling. They go to this house party. Kylie Jenner is there. I heard, depending on who you want to ask, that either Tori was showing too much attention to Kylie Jenner or Kylie Jenner was showing too much attention to Tori. Either way, Meg did not appreciate it. Meg, maybe at this point in her career, has a little bit of an ego. She's feeling sure. herself. She doesn't feel like she has to deal with any disrespect. I, I heard that. Meg was violating his ass. That they got into a fight that was like bad. And I heard God that she, she was like really shitting on him. Like really like I could see her disrespecting doing that. the fuck. Obviously, this doesn't justify no, anything. None of that. No, no, no. But that's what i heard is that it was like it was bad like like the the altercation that they were in and like the level of violation that he maybe was feeling obviously not a reason for any violence to occur never mind no. a gunshot but never mind a gunshot yeah that's what we heard and so that clip came from the podcast no jumper and adam 22 basically said that megan allegedly got upset at tori and kylie getting close and tori allegedly retaliated by shooting her now, this is all 100% alleged. I'm gonna be saying allegedly a lot in this video, <laughs> but this was allegedly why Megan was injured, and Megan never really said who shot at her. She never told the police that Tori shot at her. So the story has been quite confusing and people don't know what to believe. But the truth still remains that Megan was injured in the situation. She's even on camera limping around with a bloody foot. So we know that Megan was seriously hurt and I'm sure the situation was traumatizing for her. And I don't care what anybody says, Megan did not deserve to be shot. I don't care if she was screaming, I don't care if she was cursing. She did not deserve to be shot because that bullet could have gone in the wrong place and it could have ended her life. So I don't think this situation is a joking matter at all, but I do find it very sad that people think it's funny to joke about it. 50 Cent posted a meme of Megan running away from Tori as he was pointing the gun at her. And also, the reality star Dre and Michelle actually joked about Megan's situation on the podcast, Wine and Weed. I predict that they had some sort of Bobby and Whitney love that, you know, drove <laughs> them down this snapped esque mm. type of road and mm. i'm here for it i like that i want you to like me so much you shoot me in the foot too like but as long <laughs> what as, the whoa uh, wait. what the you want you what i want you to like me so much that if i'm trying to get out the car and you're like no <laughs> sit your ass in the repeats. car and she i'm like repeats. no nigga, i'm fucking getting out the car no you're not he bah, you bah. The we're like, talking about 24 year old meg i wish so i was 24 and could go through this type of shit I like this shit clean is up. what the now, this is one of the most ignorant comments I've heard all year, and I have heard a lot of ignorant comments this year, but my gosh, Drea is sitting up there on a platform making light of domestic violence and saying that it's fun. You think it's fun to get shot? What type of message are you sending to young girls? And how could you be the same person smiling and posing with Megan in pictures but making silly comments about her situation. That's not cool and that's not funny. When Megan heard this, she was furious. She said, dumb B, that stuff ain't funny. 
who jokes about getting shot by a dude and forget all you dudes making jokes about it too i'll talk about this stuff when i get ready now drea did come back and apologize for her ignorant statement and said i truly don't glorify domestic violence i was trying to say just love me deeply but while trying to be funny i offended many including meg and i'm sorry now drea wasn't the only one poking fun at megan's situation the throwback rapper Cameron reposted a very disgusting post about Megan on Instagram. It said, Tory Lane saw that D and started shooting. I don't care what no one says. And Cameron said in his caption, hey yo, the net wins again. This post was highly disrespectful and I don't know why Cameron thought it would be okay to repost something like this. It's one thing to make fun of her situation, but it's another thing to insinuate that she's a man. That's extremely disrespectful. And honestly, at this point, Megan needs to drop a diss track and go off on everybody. It's time for her to really speak her piece and tell her side of the story. Anyway, I want to move on and talk about Kanye West. For the past couple of days, Kanye West has been going on a Twitter rant that has been the topic of conversation. Now, a lot of people are concerned about Kanye because they feel like he might be experiencing a manic episode. Ever since he held his failed campaign rally in South Carolina, he has been posting and deleting a lot of alarming tweets about his family. Some people felt like he was doing this for attention because he is promoting a new album, but others think that something is seriously wrong with him. His latest Twitter rant first started on Monday and he posted a series of tweets where he exposed his wife Kim and her mother Kris Jenner and he also name dropped other celebrities. He said, I put my life on my God that North's mom would never photograph her doing Playboy and that's on God. I'm at the ranch, come and get me. Drake, come and get me. This is the exodus like Pusha said. Chris, don't play with me. You and that calm yay <laughs> are not allowed around my children. Y'all try to lock me up. He said, everybody knows the movie Get Out is about me. Kim tried to bring a doctor to lock me up with a doctor. If I get locked up like Mandela, y'all will know why. Chris and Kim, call me now. I put my life on the line for my children that North's mother would never sell her a sex tape. He also posted a screenshot of a text message that he sent to Kris Jenner. He said, this yay, you ready to talk now or are you still avoiding my calls? West children will never do Playboy West. Kim was trying to fly to Wyoming with a doctor to lock me up like on the movie Get Out because I cried about saving my daughter's life yesterday. I love my wife. My family must live next to me. It's not up to E or NBC anymore. NBC locked up Bill Cosby. <laughs> After Kanye tweeted all of this, he did delete the tweets and one of his good friends, Dave Chappelle, flew to his ranch to visit him and I thought that was great that he had at least some friends who were coming together just to kind of check on Kanye because it's clear that he was having a meltdown. But I did find some of the tweets he made a little interesting because I do feel like there's some truth to what he's saying. Now, I'm not gonna say that everything he's saying is true because he is going through a mental episode, so he could be experiencing a lot of delusion, but I don't think everything he's saying is completely crazy, which is why I'm not brushing off his tweets. However, I do think his tweets are making the Kardashian family look really bad because he is insinuating that Kim and her mother, Chris, are trying to exploit his daughter, North, and lead her down the path that Kim went on. In fact, Kanye said that he and Kim had arguments about North wearing makeup, and he said he wanted to ban North from wearing makeup and wearing revealing clothing because she's still a child. He thinks that they have plans to push his daughters to do adult films and post on adult magazine covers. And that's what he's really scared of. And because of his mental condition, Kim might not allow him to have any say so or control of what she decides to do with their kids. 
But after this Twitter rant, Kanye went on another Twitter rant, and this time he was spilling some interesting tea. I'm gonna say alleged tea, because once again, we don't know if this is true or not. It could be Kanye just rambling, but just remember, just because a person might sound crazy does not always mean that they're not telling the truth. But this is what he said. MJ told you about Tommy before they killed him. Kim saved my daughter's life in the name of Jesus. It's God's choice only. I will live for my children. Chris, I'm in Cody. If you're not planning another one of your children's Playboy shoots, he said, come and get me, Larsa. So he name dropped Larsa Pippen, who is a close friend of the Kardashian family. Now get this, the Kardashians did recently unfollow Larsa because rumors were floating around that Larsa allegedly slept with Chloe's baby daddy, Tristan Thompson. Now, once again, this is all alleged and I'm not gonna say that it's true, but these are the rumors that are out there. And I do find it very interesting because Larsa was one of the main people shading Jordan Woods when Tristan kissed her. So if this is true, this makes Larsa look like a complete hypocrite. And it also speaks volumes that the Kardashian family refuses to speak on it, but they were so quick to throw Jordan Woods under the bus. The Neighborhood Talk 2 on Instagram got a screenshot of Jordan actually liking this tweet about the Kardashians. She said, okay, so the only thing I peeped from that man's rant is that Larsa Pippen slept with Tristan, but didn't get dragged like Jordan did because he kissed her. You dust buckets kept your mouth closed and just unfollowed that white woman and literally tried to destroy Jordan. Mm, mm, mm. Such a shame. Now Kanye went on and he also name dropped Drake. He said, in Jesus name, no more cap. Drake, should I name more? Now this is the second time that Kanye randomly mentioned Drake in his Twitter rants. Now I do know that Drake and Kanye have their issues. Kanye has accused Drake of trying to threaten his life and Drake took shots at Kanye because he felt like Kanye was feeding information to Pusha T to diss him. And the word on the curb is Drake was allegedly planning to drop a diss track that would reveal that he allegedly had an affair with Kim Kardashian. Drake never said anything to quell the rumors and this didn't sit well with Kanye, which is why I believe he still feels some type of way about those Drake and Kim Kardashian rumors. Now Kanye did go on some more rants on Twitter and this is what he said. They tried to fly in with two doctors to 5150 me. For those who don't know, 5150 means to detain somebody in a psychiatric hospital for three days. And this is for people who experience mental health crisis. So they were trying to lock Kanye up. That's what Kanye was saying in his previous tweets. He also said, I've been trying to get divorced since Kim met with Meek at the Waldorf for a quote unquote prison reform. Hmm, I got 200 more to go. This my lady tweet of the night. Chris John Un, Lil Baby my favorite rapper, but won't do a song with me. Meek is my man and was respectful. That's my dog. Kim was out of line. I'm worth $5 billion and more than that through Christ. But y'all ain't listen to MJ and now y'all believe them? Chris and Kim put out a statement without my approval. That's not what a wife should do. White supremacy, says the future president. So those were some of his tweets and it was obviously all over the place because Kanye is not in the best mental state. But I did find it rather interesting that he implied that something went on between Kim and Meek Mill. Now, Kim and the rapper Meek Mill did partner up together to work with Cut 50, which is an organization that focuses on criminal justice reform. However, Kanye feels like Kim and Meek were doing a little bit more than focusing on reformation. They were out here getting entangled, allegedly, and Kanye apparently had these suspicions for a while because last year during his interview with Big Boy, he threw shade at Meek Mill without mentioning his name. Listen to what he said. 
But the culture has you focused so much on fucking somebody bitch and pulling up in a foreign and rapping about things that could get you locked up and then saying you about prison reform. But I believe in a different set of rights. The right to reform a broken justice system and build a new future. Mm. Like, it's, bro. Make that make sense. I think that Kanye definitely shaded Meek Mill in that interview, and he had some suspicions that Meek was messing around with Kim. Now, I'm not gonna say whether or not it's true, but this is something that Kanye believes to be true in his mind. Now, a source close to Kim did release a statement to TMZ and said that Kanye West's jealousy grew when Kim met up with Meek last year, but Kanye's anger was misplaced, according to Kim's sources. They said it was a very public group setting and it was purely to talk about prison reform. Kim's source also made it clear that she and Meek were never spotted alone together. Meek Mill also chimed in and said, this is Cap, come on. So Meek and Kim are denying it. And also Kim did release an official statement addressing Kanye's recent controversial tweets on Twitter. She said this, as many of you know, Kanye has bipolar disorder. Anyone who has this or has a loved one in their life who does know how incredibly complicated and painful it is to understand. I've never spoken publicly about how this has affected us at home because I am very protective of our children and Kanye's right to privacy when it comes to his health. But today, I feel like I should comment on it because of the stigma and misconceptions about mental health. Those that understand mental illness or even compulsive behavior know that the family is powerless unless the member is a minor. People who are unaware or far removed from this experience can be judgmental and not understand that the individual themselves has to engage in the process of getting help, no matter how hard family and friends try. I understand Kanye is subject to criticism because he is a public figure and his actions at times can cause strong opinions and emotions. He is a brilliant but complicated person who on top of the pressures of being an artist and a black man who experienced the painful loss of his mother and has to deal with the pressure and isolation that is heightened by his bipolar disorder. Those who are close with Kanye know his heart and understand his words sometimes do not align with his intentions. Living with bipolar disorder does not diminish or invalidate his dreams and his creative ideas, no matter how big or unobtainable they may feel to some. That is part of his genius, and as we have all witnessed, many of his big dreams have come true. We as a society talk about giving grace to the issue of mental health as a whole. However, we should also give it to the individuals who are living with it in times when they need it the most. I kindly ask that the media and public give us the compassion and empathy that is needed so that we can get through this. Thank you for those who have expressed concern for Kanye's well-being and for your understanding with love and gratitude, Kim Kardashian West. Now that was a very well-written statement by Kim's PR team. I thought that was great. I do think that Kim is trying to deal with this situation in the best way that she knows how, but she can't control Kanye. And that's what she wants to do. She wants to control him and get him to shut up because he's talking way too much, but she doesn't have control over him. So I can imagine that she feels helpless in this situation. But I can't help but find it strange that Kim supported Kanye when he said he was running for president. And I'm wondering if she knew that he was going through an episode then, because as soon as he announced that he was running for president this year, he started having a manic episode. Now, if Kim was concerned about his mental state, I don't think that she would have got on her platform and supported him running for president. I think it's convenient for her to support Kanye when he's doing something that will benefit her. But the minute that he says something or does something crazy, her team automatically wants to release stories to TMZ and say how concerned they are over his mental breakdown. Why would she enable him in the first place if she knew that he was going through a manic episode? I find that very strange. And it does make me question if she really cares as much as she puts on. I don't know.
I find that to be weird. And if I'm being honest, I find the whole Kardashian and Jenner clan to be weird because there's a certain energy around the sisters that is very dark. And I think that energy is causing Kanye to lose it. And also I think that same energy is the reason why Megan Thee Stallion got shot. I don't know, I'm just talking, but I'm very suspicious about that family. Anyway, tell me what you all think about this video down below. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and share this video if you care. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.